Hudu Hussein. Time discovers the truth. BBC Hard Talk exposed Bobi Wine Watchdog Uganda, December 8, 2023 at 10.41 a.m. Time indeed discovers the truth. In 2014, Bobi Wine released a song titled, Burn Dem. In that song, he called on all Ugandans to rally behind him to kill homosexuals. The song ran, Burn all the batty man. All Ugandans get behind me and fight the batty man. Ugandans not knowing that it was a, Kawani, a lie even, then, went to Facebook to quarrel with former U.S. President Obama over his stance on gay rights. Last month, however, the U.K. lifted the travel ban on the NUP leader and immediately, he went off with celebrations and jubilations in a fashion that indicated how much he missed the UK somewhat more than his own country as opposed to Mr. Museveni who is on record saying travel bans do not bother him as he would rather be in Uganda than elsewhere. Immediately, Bobi was on a flight en route to what most Africans believe is Western neo-colonial media, the BBC, where he appeared on BBC Hard Talk and as expected, his stance on homosexuality dominated the conversation. When asked about his record of homophobia, the NUP leader said he has changed and transformed. He confessed that he is tolerant of gay rights and wouldn't support the recently passed anti-gay law. Interestingly, the majority of NUP MPs supported the passing of the law hence Bobi labeling them as regime sympathizers. Many things here come into play. Not that we were shocked, but from the interview, it crystallized that he is pro-gay because of funding. While he knows that almost all Ugandans are opposed to homosexuality, he stands with the insignificant few because he has a choice to make. He has funders who wouldn't fund his political activities unless he bows before the rainbow movement, and he has the people of Uganda. Bobi Wine chooses the funders, he chooses the millions of dollars over people's interests. It is noteworthy that Ugandans have expressed the willingness to even forego aid in place of bowing to pressure from pro-gay institutions such as the IMF. The president has been quoted referring to those who bow to such pressures as, prostitutes, who succumb to the pressure of lack and exchange their honor for money. In Bobi's case, it is not just honor but the will of the people of Uganda that he has exchanged for money. An attempt to sell our people and country's heritage. Of course, a section of the West is impressed with him, and he is expected to increase his own wealth accumulation at the expense of those who have been blindfolded to support NUP. Isn't it convenient that the BBC interview came after the travel ban was lifted on him? It became apparent that he might have agreed with his gay funders to the cause of homosexuality before the ban could be lifted and that the appearance on BBC was a condition for him to prove to his funders publicly and set the record straight that he was for them and not for the people, otherwise, why would the ban be lifted? To that extent, the issue surrounding homosexuality is, for our politicians here, one of political morality, not just private opinion. It is a conflict between the will of the people and the funds of the West. Interestingly, individuals under the most pressure are President Museveni and the prospective president, General Muhuzi Kainarugaba of the MK movement. Museveni runs a government more than 40% of whose budget is foreign funded. The threats to withhold this money from his government by the pro-gay foreigners places him in a situation where his government will inevitably struggle to meet the demands of the people. Any withdrawal of aid would mean suffering for many Ugandans. These Ugandans will not blame the foreign funders who withhold their money conditioned on sodomy, they will blame President Museveni and his government will become even more unpopular. Yet, even at the risk of becoming unpopular, President Museveni chose to stand with the will of the people even if doing so endangers his own political base under resultant economic hardship. That is what men of principle do. Same thing with Muhuzi whose prospect for presidency far outweighs Bobi's. One would argue that since he is slated to be the next president, he would either keep silent or even side with the gays for his own political advantage. Some people from the West, for no good reason, are biased towards his political ambitions and this issue could be his opportunity to win over the West. But as a leader of principles, he chose the will of the people with blatant openness. Bobi is not a man of principle, certainly, if he was still a musician and not a politician, he wouldn't have changed his opinion since there would be no, catch. He took the way of whoredom where pressures and the need for money make a man change his opinion ten years later. Time can surely unearth the truth. This nation is threatened by neo, 
Neo-colonialism and the continent of Africa is at a stage where the political prudence of its leaders will be most required in history. Europe is desperately in need of African resources. It is a continent without much. Asia is looking to Africa with its billions of people surpassing their capacity. Some of these nations will do anything to re-enslave Africa. What better person would they need to occupy the seat of power in Africa than a puppet without principles? They need a man who can forsake his views for money. In Bobi Wine they seem to have such a man, probably, an agent. We can learn from Burkina Faso and Niger. Niger had France beg for aluminium. The coup leader, Chiani dictated the price at which the former colonizer could purchase this necessity from Niger. Does this look like something Bobi can be used to do for our resources? To me, this looks like something Muhuzi can not do and it is such leaders that we need not the weak hustlers thirsty for money, power and fame. Indeed, it was only a matter of time. The author is a lawyer in RCC for Masaka City. The post Hudu Hussein. Time discovers the truth. BBC Hard Talk exposed Bobi Wine appeared first on Watchdog Uganda.